Hello, everybody. My name is Ian Kirkpatty Cake. I'm an author, idiot, and loin streamer. And today we're going to be doing a generative AI update on some of the different things that I have seen. Like, I have so many things that I don't even have all of them that I've bookmarked open right now because it's already going to be a fairly long video with a lot of different facets to cover. But I still wanted to try to catch up. So get ready for that. There is a lot of hope. In case you were like low on hope, just there's a lot of hope. But before we get started, number one, if you enjoy what I do here on this channel, please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more. Number two, if you would like to be featured on the channel, check out the links down in the description below. The number one way to be featured is through Lamai, the monthly prompt writing contest, where I give you a prompt contest. Contest is kind of a misnomer, but the monthly prompt writing situation where I give you a prompt, you write a short story using that prompt. And on the first Monday video of the month, we bask in your creative geniuses because you are a bunch of genii. The second thing is if you are an indie author and you have a book out or a book that is coming out, if you submit the first chapter and the cover that we read here on the channel to hopefully help more readers find your work, because I promise you, you've done the work, you've written the book, you've shared your soul, and now it is just time to let people know that it is out there. That is the hard part. Like, oh my gosh, do I got to beg you to read Body More. The third thing is, if you would like to check out any of my books, they are available at any of your favorite places to get books, including the local library upon request. Later this year, Body More Zero will be coming out in October, and the ARC will probably be going out somewhere sometime in the summer. I'll make a community post when it's up, so if you want to check that out, you can read Zero without reading the other three of the main series, or if you've read the main series, it'll kind of just establish ralph and casey moore and also be a tie-in to the series that they will be going into which is by mm morris with that said let's get into the topic and i have one specific tweet that i would like to start this video off with just to make sure that the message is clear if this is you not interested in your opinions okay i every time you, i do a generative ai video end up with the people that are doing the luddite thing that are doing the actually i don't believe in copyright thing actually it doesn't matter so if this is you i'm already gonna say you don't got much to add to the discussion because we fundamentally disagree on ownership of labor and there's nowhere to go from there so i don't want you to waste your breath i'm not gonna waste my breath if you say plagiarism is fine we're just we're different people and there's no getting around that i hope you're not one of those people that has your feelings hurt by having all of your opinions dismissed like some people in previous videos but here we go moving on we've got ed newton rex talking about publicly available does not equal public domain i spoke to ina freed about what it actually means when generative ai companies say that they train on publicly available data as ina says lots of information is publicly available but subject to various protections including copyright so perhaps in the last couple of months you've seen a switch in the the conversation in the words used by generative ai supporters saying that if it is publicly available then it is free to use well pretty much everything on the internet is publicly available and if you assume that then you're also saying that pirate websites are fine making your making movies no longer copyright protected because some pirate uploaded them online. Just because something is online does not mean that it no longer has copyright protections. Further down, you have Dave 8 by 7 b Publicly available content is okay to read, and that's what training does to it. It reads it. It doesn't copy the source into the model. It reads it and learns from it, so public domain does not need not apply. And then Ed Newton, who works in AI and generative AI, or in AI design says, hi, Dave, training involves copying because as we have found that goes, uh, the data goes into the, the, the database. So they continually just change words to try to change the, the definition of what is happening. So then they could say, no, that is not happening because we have changed the definition. That is weasel words. Over here with John Lamb, we have the movement against exploitive scraping and generative AI derivatives is getting stronger. When you get sea lioners pushing fair use and their lack of understanding of it, this is a good checklist to show them as to why generative AI outputs that compete with the original holders aren't fair use. And if you click on this, it has under purpose, favor for you, fair use includes teaching, research, scholarship, nonprofit education, institution, criticism, comments, news reports, transformative or productive use, restricted access or parody, opposing fair uses if it's for commercial activity, profiting from the use, entertainment, bad faith behavior, or denying credit to the original author. In nature, it is published, favoring for is published work, 
like you're using something that is published work, factual or non-fact, fi factual or non-fiction based, important to favored education objectives. Opposing a fair use claim is is using unpublished work, highly creative work like art, music, novels, films, plays, and fiction. In the amount used for the fair use checklist, it is a small amount for in the favoring fair use column. It is small, small quantity portions used is not central or significant to the entire work. Amount is appropriate for favored educational purposes and an opposing fair use large portion or whole work is used portion used is central to work or heart of the work. And then under the column of effect for fair use is user owns lawfully acquired or purchased copy of the original work, one or few copies made, no significant effect on the market or potential market for copyrighted work, no similar product marketed by the copyright holder, and lack of license mechanism. Whereas in the opposing fair use column could replace sales of copyrighted work significantly impairs market or potential market for copyrighted works or derivatives, reasonably available licensing mechanism for use of the copyrighted work, affordable permission available for using work, numerous copies made, you made it accessible on web or in other public forum, and repeated or long-term use. So there was even somebody that recently popped up again in my comments talking about, oh, you Ludite, we're going to replace you. And the fact that the majority of these guys that start talking about and defending this stuff specifically rub it in your face that they want to replace you actually violates fair use specifically by saying you are trying to remove the person whom you are stealing from the market. So it's kind of amazing how short-sighted they are and how proud they are that they don't even understand or they don't care they really it could be they do understand they just don't care because they don't think that there will be a stop put to it because why why bother over here with dean samid we've got an update so pre in previous videos i talked about adobe's firefly because it was constantly paraded around as the one ethical form of generative ai that was from a major company currently being touted over stable diffusion mid journey some of the others However, and we went through some of their claims or also some blog posts walking through what Adobe Firefly offered, the pros and the cons. Well, it turns out that Adobe's ethical Firefly generative AI was actually trained on mid-journey images. So previously when I said, hey, if you're going to tell us that it was trained ethically, show us the source, tell us where the source images are from. And they didn't. It's because, um, yeah, they just bought a data set of, of somebody else's illegally acquired uh, theft. Not only that, but many other people like Dean Samet also saw through the PR spin, which was because all of them share the same data sets. It's all the same sets. And that's one of the reasons why they will never show what what is in their data sets, because they're all in the same kitchen. Going back to John Lamb, synthetic data is copyright and data laundering. There are currently zero ethical generative AI models, in case you were wondering. And this goes back to an Ed Newton Rex post saying, Hugging Face is hosting data sets that facilitate copyright laundering. The Cosmopedia data set is 30 million text files uh, uh, usable for generative AI training, unreleased released under the permissive license that allows commercial use, but the text in the data set was generated using another model, Mixed Trial, which we can assume was itself trained on huge amounts of copyrighted work without permission. Cosmopedia is synthetic data, data made by another model. It's generally thought that synthetic data isn't copyrightable. Because of this, Gen AI companies' lawyers are strongly advising them to use synthetic data. It lowers the risk that they'll successfully be sued. But it's clearly no more than copyright laundering, and you don't want to train directly on copyrighted work for fear of being sued, so you train on text that was created by a model that itself was trained on copyrighted work. You launder the copyright. This is something that creators and legislators need to take very seriously. Some generative AI companies and their supporters explicitly aim to move toward using more synthetic data. This cannot be allowed to be the way to circumvent copyright law. The effect on creators building a system that competes with them by using their work without permission is the same. So what it does... How interesting. Generated by Mixed Trial 8x7B. So like that David by 8x7B a person with a uh, generative AI in the name. Anyway, uh, so what this is talking about is, say they take one of my books or all of my books, put it into one of their data sets, output it, and then use that output to train another one. It's really, it is, data laundering is the only way to describe it. 
over here with what Schneider scanning and uploading proprietary documents to Adobe is on by default. And the only way to turn it off is to contact customer service. The lawsuits are incoming, you greedy grits. You warned us. Uh, we warned you. You refused to listen. At this point, no professional or company should use Adobe. That means that it is automatically uploading your content to their server to train their generative AIs at the moment that you scan it through generative. Uh, the moment that you scan it through Adobe by default. If you haven't turned that option off. Not everyone understands further going down further. Not everyone understands that AI runs on Adobe's servers, not locally. Adobe will have access to billions of dollars worth of NDAs, contracts, business plans, internal announcements, etc. Adobe could be making stock purchases based on AI processed documents. My lawyer says that I need to make it clear that Adobe could do this with the information being uploaded by default, not that Adobe is doing this with the information uploaded by default with no simple opt out solution or warning for suspicion or respect to customers. There is zero chance that anyone, any client, any company wants their documents to be processed by Adobe AI on Adobe servers. Even having this on poses a liability risk for everyone. Tell the judge, I didn't know that it was on and active and I didn't know that it was uploaded to Adobe. Yes, using the AI function uploads the doc to Adobe. The AI function is on by default. The users can choose to not use it. Adobe absolutely does not inform the users upfront that the document is being uploaded and processed through Adobe servers. The customer care concern in the first tweet is specifically to turn it off company-wide by the IT department. For local individuals, there's a way to turn it off on your own device. Next, we have some good news here from Kelly Carlin. Uh, the estate of George Carlin has destroyed AI George Carlin in a victory for copyright protection and basic decency. So maybe you heard recently that they were going to try to do a generative AI uh, and what holographic George Carlin stand up special in the article. It says apparently the creators of an unauthorized posthumous AI garbage version of the new George Carlin special never got to the point in their personal evolution. And in January of this year published George Carlin. I'm glad I'm dead part of a supposedly AI generated podcast YouTube series. How rude, like even that name, what a rude, despicable thing to do to a person. And this is what I was calling it before is necromancy with the way that some of these companies want to use people who have passed on in order to bring them back in order to continue milking them and their family and their name even after they're gone. Instead of just, you know, finding the next generation of artists and comedians and people from our generation, they want to bring back the dead. Which, no wonder when a lot of our political leaders or, or people in charge are like 60, 70, 80, and for some reason hold, having a stranglehold to disallow the younger generation, the next generation, to come up behind them. They're literally burning down the ladder. Well, they're, they've kicked over the ladder and they're throwing gasoline and fire over the side of the house from the top of their perches is what's happening. This week, they settled with Carlin's estate and agreed to take it down and never republish it otherwise or otherwise try to exhibit it or profit from it. There were additional terms, apparently, all of them undisclosed as of now. According to the Rolling Stones, the special begins with an explainer with Dudzy, the AI host, clarifying that what you're about to hear is not George Carlin, and adding that in order to nail the comedian's style, it listened to all of George Carlin's material and did its best to imitate his voice, cadence, and attitude, as well as subject matter I think would have interested him today. Although the show's host, Chad Colton and Will Sasso, insisted to journalists in January that the entire special was generated by letting AI study oodles of pre-existing materials, it was later revealed that the fictional Dudzy character was not AI generated and that Colgin wrote the entire fake Carlin special rather than it being trained on previous work. Carlin's, that's just then using somebody else's image to try to popularize your thing. Carlin's daughter Kelly decided with evident exhaustion to sue. Because the suit never went to trial, we were denied a discovery phase that might have provided some glimpse into the behind the scenes process that allowed the host of the show in question, the supposedly AI hosted podcast Dudzy, to virtually exhume Carlin's corpse and force the jaw hinge of his skull to move up and down while a digital ventriloquist delivered inferior grade imitation of Carlin jokes in a voice that sounded more like Ralph the Dog from The Muppet Show. 
In all, though, the settlement should be considered a notable early victory in the ongoing battle to protect creative artists of all kinds against the uncompensated and unauthorized use of their work to train software that tech bros seem so des to desperately hope will make them permanently unemployed. Did every executive who sunk billions into this stuff and every tech guy currently using it to make a keyboard prompt to movies that look like cutscenes dipped in latex once a loose... Uh, once loose a girlfriend to a, mil a film student. According to the Reuters story, the lawsuit was among the first in the entertainment world related to deepfakes, convincing digital imitations of real people made possible by fast-moving AI technology. Carlin's daughter, Kelly Carlin, said in a statement that she was pleased that the case was resolved quickly and amicably. The estate's attorney, Josh Schiller, and Boise Schiller Flexner said the settlement will provide a blueprint for resolving similar disputes going forward where the artist or public figure has their rights infringed by AI technology. I'm glad I'm dead as a casual, uh, the suit describes I'm glad I'm dead as a casual theft of a great American artist's work. Thank goodness. It was also coldly arrogant in the manner of so many pro pronouncements from the tech sector, which from the Napster era onward has committed itself to devising Weasley PR speak, exploiting legal loopholes, and basically purchasing U.S. legislators so that they can create companies worth billions of dollars by infringing on copyrighted materials. Again, burning the house down, throwing, throwing gasoline overboard at the next generation, and then wondering why everybody uh, is struggling. Because... YouTube is probably the biggest example of this, a behemoth that's a living embodiment of the idea that behind every great fortune lies a crime. The company would not exist at its current size and scope if it hadn't spent the first several years of its existence drawing global traffic by offering ripped songs and materials from movies and TVs hiding behind the notice and takedown provisions of 1998 Digital Millennium Copy Act, which let platforms escape responsibility for what gets uploaded and offering copyright owners a partial compensation of having their stolen content monetized by having ads attached to it resulting in checks big enough to buy a cheeseburger with. Google, too, has long profited from reproducing copyrighted materials to build traffic, gather users' data from the traffic, and financially exploit it in various ways. It should not surprise anyone that Google is on the side of AI tech, offers its own version, including Vorte Vertex AI, Duet AI, and BART, and has promised to legally defend generative AI users against copyright claims. From an armchair lawyer's standpoint, it seems a shame that the Carlin lawsuit didn't move on to discovery phase. Yes, it's true that one of the Dudsy hosts ultimately fessed up to writing the script for the piece rather than, as he'd previously claimed, farmed it out to plagiarism machines. Another interesting development. Apparently, the tech isn't even ready for prime time. The news had been filled with stories recently about how AI technology is turning out to be a front for human labor, mainly from a global south purchased at a barely above slave wages. But the podcasters still had to create a fake Carlin to deliver their human written script. If the suit had gone to trial, I am certain that the discovery process would have revealed that the software was fed videos of Carlin ranging over a wide time span, including materials copyrighted by the record company that distributed his album and his TV and home video companies, mainly HBO, a division of Time Warner, that released his comedy specials. Recently, legal decisions in the copyright suits against AI software makers have begun to chip away at the tech's insistence that there is no substantive difference between an aspiring art student studying the book of Rembrandt paintings in order to paint in the style of Rembrandt and a soulless digital machine imbibing and digesting millions of works of the living artists and vomiting out zombified visual slushy in response to the keyboard prompts while the tech's creators claim that the artists used in the training process aren't owed anything. The more we find out about how the Gen AI sausage is made, the better the chance that this stuff will be properly regulated. I am even starting to think that perhaps that if things keep going this way, the living persons and companies that produce the creative works that the AI is being trained on will be able to demand license fees and other payments as retroactive partial compensation for their stolen labor. Make no mistake, there is a war going on waged by the tech sector against individual human creative artists, and it's going on and it's been going on for over 25 years in different disguises. So it's nothing new. I 
At first, the goal was to build companies and pr products on the backs of artists without paying them unless forced to, and when forced to pay as little as possible. Now the tactics have switched into what appears to be an endgame phase. This endgame aims to prevent human-produced music, films, visual arts, prose, even images and likenesses tied to popular brands from enjoying any sort of copyright protection, so that the owners of the technology that would not exist without the work of legions of unpaid artists can build their fortunes and still go to sleep at night feeling certain that they'll never be regulated, much less punished for the theft of labor and copyright. What would George Carlin have said about all of this? We can speculate, but we'll never know because George Carlin has been dead for 16 years. But we do know this. The next time somebody tries to put words in a digitally resurrected version of his mouth, they'll end up in court. That's a net gain for humanity as well as the Carlin estate and everyone who understands that stealing is bad and that labor has a price. Thank you, Matt Zoller Seitz, for reporting on that. Moving forward, Re Southern had reported last month, yeah, March 20th, last month, uh, a couple of changes that were happening in the generative AI landscape. First, you have Stability AI being in serious trouble. Three out of five original SD authors just left. They join 10 other recent high-profile departures, running out of funds, payroll trouble, investment firms are resigning from the board, pushing for Emad to resign as CEO, which he later did, and upcoming Getty trial about Getty Images going after them. And then there's an article down here from Forbes with the key stability diffusion researchers leaving. I will link that in the description below in case you want to check out that article. Just about a week later, Reed Southern then posted a follow-up with Emad Mostake's downfall, talking about how Stability AI's founder tanked his billion-dollar startup. He defaulted on Amazon payments, wild overspending and misleading claims, failure to deliver on grand promises, less than $4 million in the bank as of October 23rd, 10% layoffs in 2024, disastrous NVIDIA meeting, and more. I will also link this in the description below. Turns out four days before he stepped down, he said that things were going well. But his startup rise to one of the busiest in generative AI was in part built on a series of exaggerations and misleading claims, as Forbes first reported last year. And they continued after he raised $100 million at $1 billion valuation just days after launching Stable Diffusion in 2022. His failures to deliver on an array of grand promises, like building bespoke AI models for nation states and his decisions to pour tens of millions into research without a sustainable business plan eroded Stability's foundation and jeopardized its future. By October of 2023, Stability would have less than $4 million left in the bank, according to the internal memo prepared for the board meeting and review by Forbes. The mounting debt, including months of overdue Amazon Web Service payments, has already left it in the red. To avoid legal penalties for skipping American staff payroll, the document explained that London-based startup was considering delaying tax payments in the UK government. Emad is uh, another former stability executive was far more pointed in their assessment. Quote, Emad is most disorganized leader I have ever worked with in my career. He has no vision and changes directions every week, often based on what he sees on Twitter. Well, I'm glad that publishing is not the only one suffering from uh, Twitteritis. Financial Times reported Friday that the company made $5.4 million in revenues in February against $8 million in costs. Several sources said that they are there are ongoing concerns about making payroll for the roughly 150 remaining employees. And I can't remember if some of what I saw about changing the payment model and like having to purchase space and power was for stable diffusion or for somewhere else. But I think some of the generative AI companies have started to change um, memberships. Going over here with TechCrunch and Reed Southern, Google hit with $270 million fine in France as authorities find a nude publisher news publisher's data was used for Gemini. So again, another infringement by these corporations scraping data from other places, claiming it for themselves to collect money from. This is why tech valuations are bullshit, unless you know the actual numbers for the bookkeeping. Stability AI was evaluated in the billions, yet owed $99 million in order to make an $11 million in revenue. They are so deep in the red, according to this article, which will be linked down in the description below. That has more to do with the 
the bills that they have to pay to Amazon for the servers. And then reporting on March 23rd, Emad Mostake stepped down as CEO of Stability AI. Going over to Gary Marcus, we have a reference to synthetic data, which I mentioned before. It's just data washed in more data to try to block where it came from. And he says, People have just no memory. New, new Wall Street Journal articles about using synthetic data to rescue LLMs. People started doing the same in 2016 and so, and so for self-driving cars. Eight years later, data augmentation still hasn't solved the edge case problem for AVs, and it is not going to solve LLMs unreliability either. So like there's just not enough data to actually make this work for what they're doing. And that's what the article is called too. For data guzzling AI companies, the internet is too small. So as they taught, and that was on April 1st of this year. For as much as they say, well, we just need more data. We just need more data. And then it'll fix the thing. You can never fix the thing. Never with this. That's not how the, the, the technology works. Going over to Neil Turkovitz, we have a copyright alert. In Hatchet versus Internet Archive, Jack Jacqueline Charlesworth, former GC and Associate Registrar of Copyrights, filed an amicus brief on behalf of a group of professors slash copyright scholars. The first sentence of the summary is fire. Game over a history lesson in fair use. Amicus curiae are the professors and scholars of copyright and intellectual property law identified in the addendum. The copyright and IP law professors collectively studied and study and teach copyright, intellectual property, and related areas of the law at academic institutions across the United States. They have no stake in the outcome of this case other than an interest in ensuring that copyright and intellectual property law are interpreted and developed in a manner consistent with their constitutional and statutory foundations so that creativity, dissemination of work, and innovation will continue to flourish. The summary of the argument, the Internet Archive and its supporting amnesty are unhappy with the copyright law because it does not permit them to scan physical books and distribute them over the Internet without the per permission of the copyright owner. They would prefer a system where they do not have to seek a license or pay the owner's for the, of the books for the right to distribute digital copies. As scholars and teachers of copyright and intellectual property law, amici copyright and IP law professors take issue with Internet Archive and its collaborators' self-implementation of a broad exception to the copyright for their own special benefit. Such con conduct by private actors is inconsistent with the fair and balanced development of copyright law. The unauthorized and re the unauthorized reproduction and digital distribution of copyrighted works by Internet Archive and others disrupts a significant, well-developed digital licensed market for ebooks and diminishes compensation to rights holders and authors. A broad exception to the copyright protection results in such consequences is not something that can or should be enacted through a self-defined policy of parties who stand to benefit. So scholars of copyright standing against this idea of just taking whatever you want book-wise and then spreading it around for your own personal benefit. Then we have over here with Emmanuel 2M, co-founder and CEO of Scenario.com, crafts unique and style consistent game assets with custom trained AI models is how they describe themselves. And they've got a post talking about can AI art be copyrighted? Currently, art produced by AI significantly without any human contribution cannot be copyrighted under current US law. We think that creative contributions of AI powered artists can be significant and that AI art should indeed be eligible for copyright protections. So we worked with Ara Mintake and Azura Law to submit a 20-page application to the U.S. Copyright Office seeking copyright protections for nine AI-generated works created using custom-trained AI models that preserve the unique artistic vision and styles of the artist. So-and-so, um... Araminta K is sharing her creative process on Scenario.com in a tweet above detailing how she leverages custom-trained AI models with the distinct artistic direction. Minta used her own hand-drawn artwork both as guides and as part of the training model. 
You can also explore our full brief, which was sent to the U.S. Copyright Office here, detailing arguments and the vision behind these works and our legal rationale for these protections. Copyright is a nuanced issue, and Gen AI introduces further complexities. We're prepared for the outcome and expect a lengthy process. However, this goes beyond mere formalities. So many game artists and studios we spoke with have asked specifically about copyright status of their AI-generated art, particularly when they're custom-trained models. These efforts are designed to address the concerns and hopefully benefit the wider AI community. Our goal is to enhance protection for AI-powered artists and their future creations. What do you think? Should AI-generated art qualify for copyright? Based on that, I just wanted to share that based on other, other what other people are doing, to not just send things one way. Then you have Reed Southern down here with you will fail like the rest. The training has a virtually nothing to do with the UC, the US CEO's stance. It's the lack of human input upon generation. There is case law on this, and the same judge is presiding over the class action suit against AI companies. Reza then, then posted an article where a monkey does not own selfie copyrights, court uh, appeals court says. And you have M saying, it's the lack of human input upon generation. And then um, M responds with uh, and then m adds but what if the artists spent hours if not days or weeks in making the ai art work things like learning the tools curating training data sets testing various custom models with different prompts refining the training data sets based on the above results selecting a few outputs refining the outputs with image to image in painting and more and reed southern adds Literally, none of that matters. Just because you put copious amounts of time into it, it doesn't mean that you're entitled to copyright protections. What matters is that you hit generate and out pops an image. Even in painting doesn't count. And he posted this other situation that showed this with Kristen Zergibel, who has tested the U.S. copyright's stance on generative AI with significant human editing, and they remain firm. The only thing that you can copyright are the literal brushstrokes and edits that you've done. None of the AI-generated parts are eligible for copyright. And I will link this in the description below as well for further um, investigation if you're interested. Going over to Louisa Jarovsky. It was April 11th when she posted a new U.S. bill that could make developers disclose their use of copyrighted music to train generative AI models. Going back to Ed Newton Rex, he says, For those interested in knowing about how AI companies get to training data, this is a helpful breakdown. I think that's worth understanding the way AI companies approach this, even if, like me, you don't support the strategy strategies that involve scraping copyrighted work. So if you want more information about copywriting work, here is an article with a study and data on it. A reminder that the general public don't buy the argument that just because humans can learn from publicly available work, AI models could be should be able to. In the largest public poll on this question, 2,052 people in the U.S., when people were asked how AI companies should be able to train models on any text or image that is publicly available was almost the least popular answer. But it was by far the most popular answer when asked how humans should be able to learn. Despite the number of these people trying to use, but these programs learn just like humans, nobody buys it. The only people who buy into that are other people that are banking on being able to use and make money off of generative AI, but actual people, actual customers are not. And that's one of the things that really stood out to me and stands out to me continuously as I look at this stuff, because it's the people using this stuff that are not thinking about the end user. They're only thinking, or the audience of what they're making. They're only thinking about how to make themselves money, how to make it as quickly as possible with the least amount of work. I understand that creating a work of art, whether it's music, whether it's a uh, visual, whether it's a book, it is a labor of love. It is a long process, but it is also a process of communication. I talked about this on Thursday in a way where we're transforming experiences or feelings or ideas or something through the style of art that we're doing, the medium of art. We want to show other people something that we have seen or heard or felt. And we're taking the time to learn how to communicate that because we find it important to connect with other people. Generative AI is nothing but a quick and easy scam product that does not care about the end user and people that use it to try to then sell it onto customers don't care about customers, don't care about audience, don't care about art. They just 
are looking for ways to make quick money. Newton Rex also mentioned that around 250 artists and songwriters have made a statement in opposition to generative AI using their work without permission to train models that compete with them. The list includes Billie Eilish, Nicki Minaj, Elvis, Costello, Rem, Mumford & Sons, Katy Perry, and many more, which we can't forget that uh, Nicki Minaj also used generative AI images for her music video. This is exactly the kind of statement that we need from creators. People must continue to make it clear that Gen AI companies can't be allowed to exploit people's creative outputs in this way without permission or payment to build systems that compete with them. Some of the biggest and most powerful companies are, without permission, using our work to train AI models. These efforts are directly aimed at replacing the work of human artists with massive quantities of AI-created sound and images that substantially dilute the royalty pools that are paid out to to artists. For many working musicians, artists, and songwriters, we are just trying to make ends meet. This, this would end in catastrophe. Musicians are not the only ones that are coming in. You also see a massive uh, group of humans, of just people, regular people, that are rejecting the generative AI. So as much as people try to tell you that, that humans, that, that, so as much as people try to tell you, so as much as some of these generative AI fanboys will try to tell you that People and audiences don't care as long as it's just good, it's not slop, then nobody will care. People actually do care. It is the corporations that want you to believe that that humanity and human artistry can be replaced by counterfeit garbage machines that have no purpose, no reason, no understanding behind what it is they're doing because that, that benefits them. They can pay less, they can think less, they can work less with other humans. Like, I constantly am surprised by the number of people who think that getting covers is too expensive to do because you can just shop around. Artists are so affordable in so many different styles. You just have to shop around, talk to the artist. For covers, for books, you don't even have to hire a book cover artist. Find somebody that does art that you like and then talk to them about whether they can draw the thing that you want them to draw and if you can use it for a cover and then just edit it for a book cover. There are so many different ways to create book covers that it does not take a billion and a half dollars to get an incredible cover that is gonna be eye-catching and match exactly the vibe that you're going for for your book. So over here with Rick Dreamosaurus Ludite, people are fighting back against the flood of AI. This group has 41,000 members and the people have spoken. With ancient Dungeons and Dragons players, the day has come. AI art is no longer allowed in this group. Additionally, all art posted must have an artist credited. This is not a joke. We are no longer allowing AI art. Also, if you post art of any kind, you must also credit the artist. Uncredited art and suspect or, un or confirmed AI art are subject to removal and possible further action at mod admin direct the discretion. This makes me think of the person that was talking about uh, using generative AI art for their tabletop RPG thing as if it would be anything but a scam device honestly please note the discussion of ai in regards to rpgs is still allowed further pushback comes with reed southern saying brands add ai restrictions to agency contracts behind a growing trend advertisers are placing more restrictions on their partners when it comes to ai in their work so more people pushing back carla ortez adds smart businesses don't put themselves at risk gen ai is a legal mess unable to be copyrighted a security nightmare potential copyright infringement PR disaster a loss of our, of our of your comp a loss of your competitive wages a loss of your competitive edge and more be skeptical of the hype future will thank you for it remember like I told you just it feels like that like being buried it feels like no hope but there is hope there are so many people everybody wants to connect except for the shareholders and uh since when has anybody really cared about what the shareholders think other than the other people that work for that company shareholders don't have the customer in mind let's just say let's just say there's a reason why in dystopians it is always the government and the corporations that are evil i'm just as a writer and then finally deviant art also started posting a bunch of generative ai garbage things at the end of march and into march and uh, if you look at that all of those views that few heart those that little tiny bit of heart all of those comments, a lot of people quitting DeviantArt over this because um, DeviantArt has turned on its artists, its artist population that built the website in order to do this and um, are facing backlash for it. Absolutely. But wait, there's more.
Breed Southern reporting 8 million jobs at risk in the UK due to generative AI. A best case scenario, which has already gone, come and gone, is zero workers replaced for a mere 4% increase in the size of the economy. Pretty damning report by The Guardian. In the worst case scenario for the second wave of AI, 7.9 million jobs could be displaced, the report said, with the gains for the economy from productivity improvements canceled out with zero growth in GDP within three to five years. In the best case scenario for, scenario for full augmentation of the workforce with a generative AI, no jobs would be lost while the size of the economy would be increased by 4%. So this is in an article called AI Apocalypse Could Take Away Almost 8 million jobs in the UK, says a report. So really, what is this for? Other than not paying actual people to do jobs or to learn a skill, it is just to cut things out and for shareholders to get a little bit more money while you get poorer. That is throwing gasoline off the top of the house. Another example here is seen in United Airlines in-flight magazine, Hemispheres. This is an approximately $500 job that is not going to an illustrator. New progress over here says, it's good that it can now be done by AI. No artists, humanity forward. No, it, <laughs> bro, pre pre press, press X to doubt. No, ar no artist has dreamed of having their art displayed in in-flight magazines. Artists who worked there before AI only did it for a paycheck. Implement UBI, automate commercial and incidental imagery and free artists to pursue other projects. When you take away the projects for artists to do and to make ends meet, these are the things that sustain artists, working artists, these smaller jobs while they do other things. Like, don't speak for other people. But I'm not going to waste too much, too much uh, time on this lukewarm individual. Sorry, that was rude. Going over to Reed Southern, it makes me so mad how tech bros push this blatant grift factory bullshit. Championing, championing the fact that you can prompt an entire novel, generate a cover, and package it as a real ebook in one go exists to dupe people. No one would willingly read this scam shit, and that's tr that's true. There is nothing to this except generative AI uncreative people and greedy people want to flood the market with an opportunity to make money in something that they don't care about. They're going to shove a bunch of word garbage out on the marketplace next to books that people spent time with in order to try to steal money from hardworking people because they think that you are just a pay pig and that artists of any sort are just there to be stolen from. It is such a disrespect to everyone in humanity. There is no point to this but to enrich the lives, attempt to enrich the lives of the scammers using the product. Going over here, OpenAI taking meetings with Hollywood studios and directors two weeks after their CTO dodged questions about data that they clearly stole. OpenAI courts Hollywood in meetings with film studios after, you know, saying publicly available data. John Lamb says it was never about democratizing art. It was about eliminating labor and pushing Gen AI into Hollywood while eliminating labor from data theft and copyright infringement. Call your senators and local reps and hold your union reps accountable. This was to take away opportunity from working artists because you know what? I've always told myself as an artist and I love my work. My guys, get me talking about my characters, like period. I cannot wait for the ones that you have met yet i cannot wait for the ones that you have met yet i cannot wait to release body more zero and have those characters more out into the world i have been so excited for casey and ralph since they appeared in body more too and i've been like please please somebody talk about them <laughs> and then no one talks I'm like i should find it but all i've told myself ever is that i just need one movie deal it could be one movie deal that would let me leave a day job and it wouldn't even have to be huge but it would be life-changing and that's what they're doing they're taking away life-changing opportunities from people that work their butts off to learn how to do arts to learn how to communicate through arts of different kinds and then to put it out there and these corporations are stealing those opportunities from the hard-working people that are are using their time have used their time it takes so much time to develop the skill to then be able to communicate what you're trying to communicate and then to work through the drafts of it all reed southern says does it alarm anyone when the ai filmmakers 
literally ignore consent and tout the lack of it as a feature. Paul Trillo had initially said, exploring space slash time with Sora, this isn't going to replace the filmmaking process. Rather, it's offering an entirely new way of thinking about it, not restricted by time, money, or other people's permission. So like, moment right there to uh, just straight up tell you that it is about theft. Again, like just like Shad had a moment like that where he's like, I don't have to ask for permission. Actually, you do. If you're going to try to steal Wheel of Time, yeah, you're still going to have to ask, buddy boy. Uh, Dean Sam, it says, non-disclosure of AI content in your YouTube upload may result in removal of content or suspension of your partner program. An actual W for YouTube, in my opinion, because YouTube recently, what was this, that back in March, we're saying that you are going to have to disclose if you use generative AI in your work, probably because they pay out for stuff. And they're like, oh well, yeah, we're not taking your content farming. <laughs> that is no effort through generative AI theft. We also have this from Bloomberg where YouTube CEO says, in, if OpenAI is using its video to train Sora, it's a violation of the platform's terms and service. So that could mean Google getting involved in suing Sora to shut it down if they are being stolen from. We also have the fact that people who call this AI an industrial revolution are forcing people to choose adapt or die and then mocking them for being unemployed. We got this deep fake generating camera can undress people automatically a fast company. Uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a company that, and we saw this before Reed Southern talked about it and many others with online personalities who were claiming who are complaining about people stealing their images and then running scam accounts, selling nudes that would take their pictures, put them through these naked generative AI and then sending them places. There was also a girl, I think it was on TikTok, who was harassed with something like this, where somebody took images and videos of her and put it through an AI to harass her with, oh, look, we got your nudes now. And it was a made up nude. That is that is what some of these people are doing. And they will say that it is adapt or die. What is wrong with these sick people? Let, let's go back. Let's go back to generative AI bros, probably porn brained. Let's be real because we go back to the game character ones. There's pornifying all of them. And don't tell me it's not pornifying when you're adding the breasts, the makeup, changing them entirely. Guys, I think you need to touch grass. I'm sorry, but we also have this here with Washington Post reporting AI hustler stole woman's face and faces to women's faces to put in an ad and the law can't help them. Artificial intelligence is spurring a new type of identity theft with ordinary people finding their faces and words twisted to push often offensive products and ideas, which includes the naked generative AI camera. And there are no laws currently protecting anybody. This goes back to John Cox here, where new from 404 Media, it is finally here. A user on Telegram is charging as little as $10 to make an AI-generated porn of any normal non-celebrity person in the world. Sometimes posts the real person's name as well. So send them your thing and they will make porn of your preference uh, of normal people. That does not exist. Using likenesses to make porn. What is wrong with people? We also have John Booth over here, AI advertising, using celebs for local business promos, using character references on Mid Journey, animated with Run Wamel, and using AI voice sampling. You can have a Drake shout out your local bar. Need access to a runaway lip sync now. Uh, so, yeah, this is kind of a major violation of uh, identity protection. So just wait until your small local bar gets sued for using somebody's likeness to advertise them. We also have this situation on Etsy, where a Bruna, Bruna Tom was trying to sell her original work on Etsy. Meanwhile, Etsy allows porn um, of underage looking girls on their website freely, and you don't even need a sign in for it. You just also, for for a minor without a login, your site looks not safe for work very quickly. All you have to do is type in AI, GI, and you get AI girl squirting. Another thing to keep in mind with the way that generative AI is going is ChatGPT can now create mind maps. No more wasting hundreds of hours making visuals for studying or simplifying complex ideas. 
how about it just think for you? And I mentioned this like a year or two ago when I first started covering this because I talked about the dangers of just letting something think everything for you. And it's also one of the reasons why on this channel I present ideas and I present even when they're bad, even when they're really rough, even when they are possibly very, very wrong and I look like an idiot, I would much rather present ideas and then think through what it is I saw or what it is I'm feeling or what it is I'm observing and come to conclusions by exchanging ideas as opposed to having something that think for me because I would rather be able to express what it is that I've seen and know why that is. If you allow your brain to astrophy, it is, you will start being unable to think. It's the same with like, if you let yourself not create for a while, you can start to lose that ability to create. I recognized when I started drawing again in the end of 2022 and throughout 2023, as I started to draw, uh, my mind's eye has gotten better that I can imagine things easier. I can see characters through appearance easier. I can see locations and sh and illustrations and everything so much better that I just love. I love drawing again. I love being able to think and see in this in this way that was not unlocked to me before that got closed off because I stopped drawing. And I don't know, I don't know why you would want this, except to basically put your life on autopilot, in which case it's going to lead to what I believe is a bigger crisis of purposelessness. Because I think that there is a crisis like that already going on where people don't know what they want to do with their lives, where they don't see the purpose in life. And for me, I can at least see the purpose, my purpose in creation. It's why I've taken the job that I have right now, where it accommodates and basically uh, sustains me at, at the bare minimum as I do what I believe I was put on this earth to do, which is storytell and create. And I mean, that's the main thing <laughs> and look like an idiot other times. Um, but I think a lot of people search for meaning at the same time, or they, or they lean on what is easy because they don't want to work. And I get it. It's hard. It sucks. But you also, if you put yourself on autopilot to not actually be present in your own life, you will feel an emptiness because you need a purpose and you have to work to find that purpose. It might not be everything that you try. You might not find it immediately. I sang for 13 years. I played the guitar for a couple of years before I was like, my hands are too small. I'm not that passionate about this. I make up excuses for why I don't want to play the guitar. I'm not really interested or very good at learning music. Like the whole thing about learning how to read music confused my brain. It just didn't work. Um, and then my singing voice <laughs> took a skydive because of, uh, vocal damage and like, it sucks to have all of that training go down the drain. I sang for a lot longer than 13 years. It feels like, but I think I found the other things that matter to me, which are writing and drawing, which allows me to visualize the characters and visualize my stories and visualize other people's stories so much better. So why would you want a mind map to think for you to think through your problem solving. All it is going to do is make it so you can't solve your problems on your own. Over here with Justine Moore, we have a professor offered students amnesty if they admitted to using ChatGBT on their assignments. 23 out of 25 emailed to confess. And Gary Marcus added, do we have any solid data on what long-term effects heavy use of ChatGBT is having on students learning? It's going to destroy their ability to critically think or to to actually do the work that they are supposed to be doing, to gather information, to write cohesive thoughts, to think through their problems, because again, it's just outsourcing it. And then they're going to be, you know, 26, 28, 30, and not be able to do anything and not understand why everything is so hard and be brain dead and just, guys, don't do it. Also with Professor Lee Cronin, we have one of my favorite figures from the assembly theory paper, the uh, the assembly observer gives grounding to the theory in experiment and and explains why contingency is so important to explain what exists. Jill Nephew says, why AI for creativity is dead in one slide. Life is constantly selecting for new assemblies of existing things that work in the current context and each context is unique. We, of course, grain these newly assembled things and can label them in our minds. We do this to sense make the, and create in our create into our futures. We are fountains of new assemblies with deep and meaningful chains of assembly of everything around us feeding into our sense making and creative processes. 
We do this dynamically and at the speed of life, using our perceptions and assemble deep structures in that process. In contrast, AI does not have this open dynamic relationship with the creative universe. So while it can create novel and com combinations of what we have culturally labeled, they are not assemblies, meaning they can't participate to be further assembled. Why is that? Because the new model combination is not named, labeled, or represented in the data set as something that can further be blended. Penguin, dog, hamster, hamburger, do not have a data set and without the ability to perceptually coarse grain its ways that are meaningful to humans we be able to communicate that meaning in a lived history and context that is also meaningful to humans such as they adapt adopt to it, the depth will not be created. This is already starting to play out in measurable ways and people are starting to take note that creativity takes a bump than a long-term hit. The greatest gift of AI might be that we can start to see this emptiness and ultimately dead end clearly. And in contrast, that we all might also start to see the magic and power of human natural intelligence and how underappreciated and engaged it is now. It kind of just makes me sadder for the AI bros that have so little going on in their head so little understanding of creativity of soul of life of meaning that they want to destroy everything around them because they feel so miserable that they got to light everybody else on fire instead of doing some soul searching to bring themselves out of that depth of destruction then we have james rosen birch over here and ali al khatib saying I thought the point of making the mind map was to create an ontological mapping of concept yourself. What are you getting out of it if a chat bot makes it for you? And then James Rosenberg adds many diag diagrammatic tools like mind maps exist to help users make sense of and play around with how they want to organize information. The value is not in the output, but in the process of making the diagram. Automating it misses that. Many people wrongly believe ideas are fully formed packets stored in the brain sitting there to be extracted. This idea motivates a lot of work and hype around AI and brain computing interfaces. Unfortunately for de them, ideas are active processes processes then synthesized through work. Much effort in neuroscience, one of the areas I trained in, went into discovering where ideas are stored in the brain and thinking, of course, that the brain worked like a computer memory. It turned out that was not the case. This will be linked down in the description below if you want to see more from, from James Rosenberg in this discussion. But also very interesting and what I've really enjoyed recently with some of the topics of the videos is getting to learn so much from different specializations and like this is talking about neuroscience I was looking at when talking about the arts it was looking at art history and just the intersection of humanity and behavior and expression and all of these different ways has been so insanely interesting to me and I look forward to doing more and more videos just in general to like get ideas of things to look at and research. Then I saw this this tweet by author James Crack, Crake talking about this. And I see too many authors doing this where it doesn't seem like they understand the point or the idea behind what it is they're doing. They're just selling a product. And at this point, I'm going to start, you know, highlighting when when people specifically authors or people that call themselves authors um seem to just be in it for gig work or money and where where people seem to be missing the point so he said had someone tell me that i should be using ai to make my stories i asked how i was supposed to get better at writing if i wasn't actually the one doing the writing and he said you need to reevaluate what it means to be better stopped and mad said just launch a fish at their silly face and he responded with unfortunately they kind of have a point because if i was to suddenly release 10 more books at the exact same quality as gamma coin over the course of the next few weeks i would probably go full time development might not be the point right now so what he is saying is it looks like that money is the point to make this a gig to make this a full-time gig so that he doesn't have to pay but that turns every person receiving his books the people that have followed him to read his books then become pay pigs where you just owe him money so that he can live the lifestyle that he wants to live. And he doesn't have to put any effort into what he's doing because all he wants is the payout.
That's what that implies. And as I said down here, at that point, you wouldn't be a writer, you'd be a production line wearing a meaningless label. Not only that, but you have to ask yourself, do you respect your audience so little that you would give them that output? Do you respect your peers so little that you would bog the market with stolen regurgitation? What, just so you can go full time? I know that it sucks working and trying to find time for everything else. But I guess if you were to choose throwing generative AI garbage up there so that you can live full time, you really don't care that much. And that's not at him, that's at anybody who does it. Eric Borget Bordages, I'm sorry, says, when I see headlines like this, all I can think of is how ghoulishly disrespectful it is that these people think so lowly of our expertise and what we bring to their company that they have to do tests and experiments to see if they need us. It's not cute, it's offensive. And this goes down to Tech Raptor posting, NVIDIA's AI demo unwittingly proves that human voice actors, artists, and writers are irreplaceable. NVIDIA released another tech demo trying to show that generative AI can drive characters in games unwittingly achieving the opposite effect and proving that human voice actors, writers, and artists are irreplaceable. So, yeah, humans are irreplaceable. You're, again, it's just a facsimile, a facade of something dis that rips off humanity without understanding what it is it's doing. And then the final section of this video for today is going to be about Miss Jess Myers here, who posted many, and I've seen this, we've seen Shad use this argument. Lots of people try to use this argument. Many of the artists on here have demonstrated their dedication to keeping marginalized folks, including those with disabilities, out of their communities and, and the marketplace. Gen AI says, fuck that. Those barriers come down now, and I'm here to say it. So constantly, we see these generative AI bros saying, using using marginalized folks and disabilities as the excuse to steal from other people, even in the face of uh artists who say they are part of those communities it doesn't matter they don't get recognized reed southern is down here in the comments the art community is comprised of a metric fuck ton of marginalized folks and those with disabilities stop talking out your ass and using people as a shield for theft it's disgusting john lamb i am one of those marginalized and i do not need you to speak on my behalf gen ai steals from everyone including marginalized and disabled that someone who'd sink this low to use people of marginalized identities and disabilities to defend exploitive tech that far disadvantages them as creative and many others is repulsive. These comments are just full of people disagreeing with her. She has a couple that agree with her and say ignore the haters because apparently now when she can't use them as a shield, the marginalized and disabled are no longer being used by this. She just chooses to further marginalize them. <laughs> And we have people like Brian Fire here saying, of course, Jess Myers is right. Artists demand on fair use, even if they sometimes forget when they get mad. And then we have another hot take from Jess Myers that says, fair use is good for consumers, creators, and artists alike. Copyright law doesn't guarantee you freedom from competition. The shareholders lobby spent decades sowing fear among artists for the sole purpose of tricking them into carrying the industry's water. Kind of, you know, completely ignoring the fact that you have to protect people's creative work so that corporations can't steal it so that you can be paid for your labor, maybe a little bit, you know, I like how Brian L. Fire here says this consent BS is dangerous. The first A says you don't have to ask permission to create. You don't have to ask permission to create. You do have to ask permission to steal somebody's stuff to use their ideas as a derivative. Reed Southern also got blocked for this, saying that when she said she was blocking all of the haters and the vile comments. Benjamin BLM says copyright is supposed to protect works that are hard to make but easy to copy. It's supposed to incentivize creators to share with the world because they are still protected and have the rights over their works. AI completely ruins that equation. You are now competing against yourself. Every piece you put out there is a new piece that AI companies will scrape from the web and make their models better at rep rep replicating you better at competing with you and devaluing your work making it harder to discover you it's actually to your detriment to now share luckily we have people like the glaze project who are trying to restore the balance giving artists power over their work to force companies to respect them catria says the audacity of ai shills like jess myers to disparage artists as monopolists and rent seekers in the same breath defend ai startups supposed god-given right to preserve their secret hot sauce copyright protected data that they have no right to from other ai, AI startups which is hilarious true they are like you cannot copyright protect 
project, your actual works, whether it is books or music or visual arts or video or anything, nope, but the generative AI companies that scraped the internet for that information, their, their stolen garbage is. Khalid said Onyi, a freelance writer, adopted a generative AI and still lost to the marketplace. Businesses lost too, and so will their customers when the pop public rejects it. Read Southern adds, AI isn't built on efficiency. It's built as a replacement and marketed as efficiency. And what is AI efficiency built on? The stolen works of writers and artists. It's not fair use as it competes in the same market where that efficiency displaces jobs. Here on March 23rd by Hanatu Ashiloj. Freelancers are struggling to balance integrity and making money as AI threatens to devalue their work. Since its release in 2022, the chatbot ChatGPT has widely been used in writing, with some writers using ChatGPT to improve their processes. Small businesses owners, small business owners are increasingly using it to create content, cutting out the need to hire writers. On social media, for example, there are thousands of videos and threads teaching people how to leverage AI writing and designing tools to secure freelance jobs without prior knowledge or experience. You would think that it would be obvious that this is the next scam thing that everybody is doing. It is increasing competition in an already oversaturated market. I should know, I freaking tried to do freelance writing back in 2012, 2013. Yeah, that was already hard. I got like three three jobs doing that. According to... It's already hard to be like, hey guys, hey guys, you see how I do, do book reviews? I could offer you that editing service at a price if that's the kind of editing that you want. I have a very difficult time like making that making that offering. According to Onyi, payment rates for simple gigs on Upwork have dropped significantly in the past year as competition on the app is now steep. Clients rent from offering $100 for 10k words to half up the amount as there is always a freelancer is desperate enough to accept the meager pay. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I was like, you know what, I'm not even doing this because the amount of pay that they were offering for the amount of work that they wanted was literally not worth the time spent on it. You would be getting like $2 an hour for how much writing you would do. Well, minimum wage. So you might as well be doing something else. And I'm going to save my writing, my writing energy for writing something that I want to write. This situation has led Onyi to secure twice as many clients as she would normally take on in order to meet her income target. This is more tedious, but she's found tools that make her work faster. According to her, about 60% of the words in her drafts, especially the novels, are generated by AI tools. So uh, it's gig work. It's gig work. She doesn't respect you. It's just to pay for her bills. Garbage. I can promise anybody that I give feedback to it is 100% my thoughts, my work, my thingies on the story. Beyond the most popular freelance places like Fiverr and Upwork, smaller marketplaces also feel AI's impact on the interaction between talent and client. Femi Taiwo, CEO of Nigerian freelance market TerraWork, shared that his company has seen a slight decline in the number of gigs available and the rates offered. Ed Newton Rex describes a glimpse of our early work with artists and filmmakers to see how Sora can help bring ideas by open AI. And Ed Newton says, art, artist washing. When you solicit positive comments about your generative AI models from a handful of creators while training on people's work without permission slash payment. Now, this isn't just about art. We've talked about this before, but they are doing so much more than that and wanting to replace humanity. As far as I'm concerned, this is about people who hate people who want to replace and destroy regular people because there is no reason for this quote i can't wait for doctors to replay to be replaced by ai honestly healthcare currently looks more like an improve improvision than science hasn't it always <laughs> let's be honest let's be honest let's be honest it's always been it's always been mad science -y. yeah why don't you try this and if you don't die meanwhile we'll see you in six months oh and have a headache why don't you just do a colonoscopy because business is slow and our client needs the insurance money why the hell is an ai more widely used in healthcare do they think that they're bro 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 come here <laughs> do you think that the insurance companies are not going to be you know paying off the generative ai companies to tell you what you it's still people it's still people behind the machine 
I mean, people are fired and replaced by AI left and right, but healthcare is still a middle ages and absolutely subjective and dependent on doctor whims. So why don't we save some tax money and start using AI more widely in the healthcare? I'll trust AI provided diagnosis and cure over your average doctor any day. I'm convinced that AI is already able to diagnose and provide care plans much more accurately than humans. Just fucking change the laws so the doctors are obliged to double check with AI before making any decisions and it should be considered negligence if they don't look generative i thought it was a tool but this is going to make it a replacement look you can use obviously we talked about in a previous section of oh we talked about in a previous video on the playlist if you check that out after this that you can use gener you can use ai to find patterns and to assist in some things to assist in some medical diagnoses but it can't replace human intervention human understanding human uh, knowledge. And that's what these people want, really. Finally, that's not the only thing that they want to replace with generative AI, with computers, with the tech bro. Can you imagine you got date night with your girl? You've been dating your, your AI girlfriend for eight months, and it's really just like a salty, sweaty, Dorito finger dipped tech bro texting you the entire time, pretending her name is Alexa. <laughs> Uh, Daniel Figuela says, you say, no, I don't want a perfect AI partner. I like imperfection better. It's real. That's not, that's not the words of a freaking misanthropic because you are too weak to ask what kind of experience would pull me away from my partner to AI or pull my partner from me. The future is coming at you regardless of your denial. Look. You might hate people enough to not want a human, to just want to stare at your computer, but I want a heart to exchange with somebody. I want the man that is the other part of my soul, and that does not come in a computer. Are people difficult sometimes? Yes, they are. There have been things in all of my relationships, but guess what? Every single relationship that I have has been worth any of the tears that I have cried because I love the people that have become part of my life. And I love the people that have become part of me. And I love the people that have become parts of my family. I can't have a life without them. They are that important. And a machine cannot do that. A machine cannot exchange a piece of its heart for my heart like it can with other people. And a husband, a partner is a much larger chunk of that. A partner is what a partner is. It's not somebody to just lay down on a bed and bang. It is somebody to go through life with, to check yourself with, to go through adversity with, to help you, to love you. And that is not what a machine can do. And really, I don't know if this person really believes that or if he's trying to sell an idea to sad people who are alone for things that he doesn't actually experience because... I mean, that's just more cruel. If you're like, you're not living that life and you're just tr trying to take opportunity against people that are sad and lonely and don't know what to do and are lost, that is a sick business practice. Um, but I cannot imagine being this person, whether you believe that generative, that AI is the future for partners or not. <laughs> and then your two AI bros just your two AI buddies <laughs> your AI boyfriend and his AI girlfriend just end up dating each other because they determine that they're better partners with for each other than you because you're just a stinky human that's that's where it would go let's be let's be real so that's all that I have for today I know I say all that I have but it's already a long video but still uh, that's everything that I wanted to present this time around with the generative AI news and AI news in general. Let me know what your thoughts, <laughs> let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below for everything that you feel like discussing today. How are you feeling? Where's your hope at? What do you think about would you date a generative AI? Look, look, I think about it. I never finished that series, but when I was a teenager, I was reading the manga Absolute Boyfriend and... <laughs> Like, because I never finished it, I also didn't find out until like a couple months ago when I actually remembered anything about Absolute Boyfriend. I remember watching the live action as well, and I can't remember if the live action actually like finished. But it does, and like she orders 
a robot boyfriend and the series spoiler alert ends with that boyfriend wearing out because it's a limited time that he's alive anyway like they do fall in love he takes the place of her childhood friend who has loved her all of his life and then when he is going to die he goes to the the childhood the childhood friend and asks him to take care of her because he's not going to be around anymore saw this coming you know 10 15 years ago whenever that was right uh anyway let me know what your thoughts are on any of this in the comments down below with that said thank you so much don't lose hope i have not lost hope at some point like some of this like with daniel figella i'm like i can't even tell if you're being serious you feel like a joke so i laugh at a lot of it with that said thank you so much for watching have a great weekend and don't die was that wayland cross in the trunk do you know, or is that something that's still being figured out? The person in the trunk was not Wayland Cross. Is he in trouble? We don't know who did it, but as the owner of the car, the longer he's missing, the worse it looks for him. Cross isn't a killer. For the last couple of years, the average number of murders in Baltimore has been over 300, and it's been going up. Mind you, that's only whatever the badges count as official murder, and believe me, there are people that don't count when they die. Wayland? If you're down here, tell me. I'm not talking to the badges, I just... I've been looking for you. They found a body in your trunk. Way. Why? Did you do that? To the left. Plain black letters read along the wall. You walked in the corridor. Once that ends, you chose the dark is on the right. My vision goes blurry, flickers black and black and black for longer intervals until I can't see anything at all. I'm not screaming anymore, but my voice echoes back to me. Where the hell am I? You're dead, Josephine. Even smart people do stupid shit sometimes, right? <laughs>